three, two, what is up everybody? And welcome back to Zachary Reality. We are here for a surprise pop-in interview with Dan Giesling, who was just eliminated from the traders. How are you feeling a day after the episode? You know, I've this I've had a long time to process this. You know, if you ask me like the day after, it's a little different than now. Um, it was kind of like you have the secret and then now like everyone knows about the secret. Uh, but, it, you know, it wasn't as painful as I thought to watch it go down. And, um, you know, I had such a fun experience. It, it was cool to see. Well, obviously, you're good at keeping secrets. You know, you couldn't spoil the show, but you also had to keep a secret that you were a traitor <laughs> for most of the time in the house. However, people were really on to you from day one. Was it really hard to keep it a secret? Did you ever slip up? No, I never slipped up. I think uh, how I <laughs> how I operated in the house probably was a big slip up. But also it's it's who I am. I, you know, I think one of the things the show showed was that I'm quiet, but also like I would talk to people. I just wouldn't talk about games. So like out of everyone there, I could tell you probably the most about everyone individually about like their their life, what they do, their family, da, 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 because that's what I do in Big Brother. So it's like mm. establish that relationship, figure out who I can trust and then start talking game. But the time frame in Traders is so much shorter that you know, I never adapted to be like, Dan, don't do that because you don't have enough time to do that. Yeah. I mean, you've proven that you can win Big Brother and go all the way, but Traders is a different game. So we're seeing Big Brother players, Survivor players, Housewives, mm -hmm. you know, just try and figure out the game as they go. So do you have any regrets how you played the game? Yeah. I mean, I got like a, a, long a list. Laundry, laundry list of mistakes that I made okay. for sure. Um, and I'm but... sure people are telling you more mistakes all day that you didn't even know existed. <laughs> But the, the reality is, like, would I change a ton of stuff? Yes. But in the moment with the information that I had and going off, you know, gut feels and what I thought was the right move, I wouldn't change any of that. At like a bird's eye view, um, of course, I would, I would change everything. But the reality is I did the best I could um, with the information I had. Yeah, so I think everybody wants to know why you didn't target Parvati at the round table because it seemed like more people were leaning towards possibly voting her out or you. So that was your one chance to kind of stay around this time. Yeah, the there's two reasons, and I'd say they're of equal importance. One is Phaedra, no one suspected her. Like, And in this game, there at some point a traitor is going to go, and I didn't want it to be me, mm -hmm. and it certainly wasn't going to be Phaedra because – no one she was on no one's radar so that was for me a problem because i know at some point a trader has to go and so i'm like okay well let's let me get rid of phaedra because she's in the way of me winning and she has bergy under her thumb she has the bravo click and she's really good like at uh you know developing relationships so my move was to get rid of her and then take that as like my chance to prove to the faithful that I'm good at catching traders mm -hmm. so that they're not on me. If I flip the other way, who Parvi was who I was like, that was my alliance. Yeah. Uh, if I flip on her, what's my next move? I'm next in line and I'm just getting bled out. And like, we're at least like, I didn't see a path to like turn on Parvati, who's my, who I saw as my number one ally, and then find some way to win. My path was go through Phaedra and then I'm clear as a faithful and, you know, ride this thing out. Clearly it was a, a mistake. And I think, yeah. um, I, I think Phaedra really trusted me. Like I genuinely feel that. And I think I, you know, I don't think she's happy with me. And I think that I hundred percent could have played the game with her and we both could have won together mm -hmm. in the end. And I, but at the time in the, in the castle, I didn't see it that way. I think you just have to take things one step out of a time at a time. And it would have just been so much easier for you to get rid of Parvati that night because you, you know, you didn't bring up Phaedra at the round table. I mean, you brought her up at the round table. You didn't, it just surprised everyone. No one had time yeah. to process that or think or had side conversations. So maybe you waited too long to bring that up. I think, which was, was your demise. hundred percent. I think if I bring it up uh, the day before with Janelle, who's I think was waiting for me to give her something, I think, Phaedra gets a couple votes. The outcome might not be different, but at least the percentage chance is higher. And the other thing is you nailed it on the head. Like when I play Big Brother, I plan all the way to the end. And this game, you just got to get through the day and then yeah. anything else can change. And, and, you know, I never I didn't adapt to that. Um, well, we I went to the Traders experience in Los Angeles. So we played the game for an hour. I was the trader and I I won flawlessly. 
Did it's not. fun, right? It's, it's so fun, much right? fun. My friends didn't even suspect it, and they know how much I love these games, and they still didn't know. So that's on them. Um, if you would have got to see Phaedra later that night, let's just say Parvati got voted out, how would that reaction have been? Because you really threw her under the bus. Like, how were you going to face her in the dungeon? Yeah, you're saying if you both if, stayed. If me, if me and who stayed? Phaedra. So let's oh, say Par- you're saying if Parvati somehow got voted out? Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm cooked. Like she would have came for you. Oh, I'm literally cooked. Yeah, it's like this was everything. Either get Phaedra out, and it it doesn't work, and you're gone, or you get Parvati out, and you're gone the next week. You know, that's how I saw it. You know, anything can change, but um, I just, I mean, I looked at at Phaedra as a formidable opponent, and I didn't think I could beat her. That's that's how I approach these games. Like I'm not going after weak people or whatever. I'm going after the people that I think are in my way of winning. And I always, I take that as like a compliment, like, mm-hmm. right. Like someone thinks you're so good. You're going after him, but I, I don't think Phaedra took it like that at all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A last question. Cause I know you have to go soon. Yeah. What, what do you think, what do you think of the fans, you know, backlash that you blew up Phaedra's game and it's kind of unfair. And now Trishel is suspecting things. You know, how do you feel about that? I think, you know, the Bravo fan base sees it like a Bravo show, which is, that's what you see on Bravo, like someone being petty and like, well, I, I'm going down, you're coming down with me. That's not it at all. For me, I'm like, I like Phaedra. I hope she wins. It's not like it, that was my move. I, I'm not someone that's like trying to ruin other people from winning a game. It just that was my move. And that's what happened. But it, and no intention was like, OK, I got heat on me. You know, let me ruin this for everyone. That's just not how I play these games. Yeah. And um, but I can see why the Bravo fan base thinks that because that's what they're used to seeing on Bravo shows. Okay, I'm Bravo fan base and CBS fan base. Wait, yeah. um, before you go, Peter, um, them choosing him to be a traitor, happy with that? Obviously, we don't know how it's going to unfold yet. I think if Peter accepts, it could be potentially explosively great television, seeing him turn on his own kind and like really like owning it and becoming, like, you know, like, but I think in the ho- in the castle, I believe he can be swayed watching the show. I'm like, there, there's no way this dude is not. Do you think he's going to turn? So my thing is, is that I I'm worried for him if he turns it down because it's like flipping the middle finger to the traders. Like he's done. Like you don't turn that down and then you, you're on a, you're on a death clock. It's over for you. So I don't know. We'll see. I don't know what he's going to do. I think if he takes it, it's going to be amazing television. If he doesn't, I think he's a dead man walking. Okay. Well, we will leave it there. Thank you so much for your time, Dan. I will see you in New York next week. Sounds good. I look forward to it. See you, Zach. Awesome. Take care. And thank you all so much for tuning in and watching. Let us know your thoughts on this interview with Dan and his gameplay down below in the comments. And do not forget to rate, review this podcast. Or if you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. (laughs) Bye.